Hi, my name is David and welcome back to another video about white toner printing. You've seen many videos on white toner printing on this channel using our little ghost, mini ghost and big ghost white toner printers which can print from small size cards up to A3 in our big ghost using transfer media or just printing straight onto cards, paper or any other application that you would imagine using white toner. Our white toner cartridges are available for many printers which enable you to just simply swap from a black cartridge in your printer to a white cartridge enabling to print white whatever you see in black on your screen. In today's video we're going to print on a hoodie. Although it's getting warmer and more like spring at this time, um, it might be nice to have a warm and cozy hoodie for the cooler spring evenings. And in today's video I'm just quickly going to print a pure white design on this blue hoodie using our little ghost white toner printer which is available in our online store. You can browse our web store and search our blog on www.ghost-white-toner.com finding many options for transfer media, white toner printing, white toner cartridges and handy tools like our um, matte finish paper and glossy finish paper which we will use in the transfer process like our A foil and B paper transfer media and many more. If you like the channel um, please hit the subscribe button and activate the bell to get notified when we put out new videos. Also check out our Instagram, Facebook and Pinterest where we regularly fuel you with great inspirational content about printing, transfer and customization of any kinds of materials. I'll quickly walk you through the printing process on our white toner and I'll take you to the screen to show you my design. As you can see, I've got my design already opened up on the screen, which is a nice mountain design with some arrows, some mountains and let the adventure begin. And we've also got um, some nice small logos down here. So with a big large hoodie like the one I have here on my desk, it would be advisable to use the A3 printer but I want to show you how to do it on the A4 printer. So I just open up the print dialog and select my ghost printer from the printer setup. You can see that I've got the mini ghost, the big ghost and the little ghost installed and I'm just using little ghost at this time. As this is a pure white design where everything is black on the screen that I want to print in white, I'm going to check the grayscale mode uh, only button here in my print dialog. It might be located somewhere else depending on the software that you use. We're printing straight from Adobe Acrobat Pro or Acrobat Reader would be the same options. I just quickly go through my settings here. I choose to print A4 and keep it A4. Um, I'm going to take a quick look at my paper settings. I'm going to set the paper to normal too, which is advisable for printing on the A-foil. And in the quality pane, I make sure that um, mirror printing is selected because we want to use it in a transfer application. I just deselect duplex printing because we won't need that here. And then we just hit the print button. Make sure that you insert the A-foil with the matte side facing up because this is the side you want the printer to print on. Also double check if you have your ghost white toner cartridge installed. Open up the printer front, slide out the toner tray and you will immediately recognize that's the spot where the white toner needs to sit. This is also the spot where you would swap in the black toner if you need it. Great feature about Ghost White Toner is that all our printers are self-cleaning, so you can swap between the white and the black toner as often as you need it, which easily enables this printer to be used in your standard printing office matters as you like. Close the toner tray, close the printer and you're ready to print. Right after printing you can see that it comes out mirrored if you take a look at the printed side which is the matte side. It is mirrored, if you turn it around you can already see how it would look uh, after the transfer process on your t-shirt. This makes it also easy for you to align the design and make choices where to place it. But before we do so we will start the A and B transfer. Always make sure that the lower plate of your heat press is quite hot. You can quickly give it a pre-press by just closing the press 
close it for 30 seconds or one minute on 160 degrees, which is the operating temperature for this application, to make sure that the lower plate is hot. This is particularly important to make the glue from the B paper transfer to the toner on the A-foil and ensure a good and clean separation in this process. After preheating, I pull out the table here, put the A-foil on the table and cover it with the B paper. Make sure that the yellow lines are facing up so that the glue is facing the toner. I always like to fold over the edge on one end of the B paper, which makes it easier for me to separate things when it comes to peeling. Now I just place the B paper over my A foil and I cover everything with a few sheets of A3 copy paper tacked together with some heat resistant tape. This is also available in our online shop, you can get it anytime from us. For this application we press for 120 seconds just to make sure that the glue and the toner have enough time to react with each other and the glue from the B sheet will be picked up by the toner. Thus, after separating those two papers, you will only transfer printed items. This makes this sort of transfer particularly interesting if you have very intricate designs. Designs that feature a lot of fine lines, which would be impossible or hard to make with standard vinyl, textile vinyl, which you would have to weed out in a long process. So this is why we love toner transfer, it makes things easier and quicker for you. Once the time is up, you open up your heat press, remove the copy paper and quickly wipe over your design with a cloth. This is to help the heat evaporate evenly from the paper. And then you start separating from where you fold it over the bead paper in a smooth and constant motion. As you can see, the adhesive from the B sheet has picked up with the toner and is now on the A sheet. You can also feel that after the peeling uh, the toner areas are kind of sticky which will ensure a good transfer. All right, you can see that, hopefully the camera picks this up really good, where you can see that all the adhesive is now over on the toner and you can also feel that if you would touch it, it would be really sticky and this will ensure that you have um, a good transfer to your textile which is also long lasting. So what I need to do now is I need to just quickly cut around the edge. Sometimes there is an indention line from the B paper on the A sheet and I don't want to have this in my transfer so this is why I just quickly cut around it. All right. Now as you can see I've, I've got two or three designs here on my, on my sheet. I've got the big one and I've got two smaller ones. I will just separate those with two cuts and now I'm going to make choices where I want to place my design. I first start with the bigger one which probably would look cool on the chest side of the hoodie. So I'm placing my hoodie on the heat press and as always I give a quick pre-press to the textile. This is important for two th things. First, my press is set to standard cotton t-shirts. This guy here is way thicker, so I probably might have to adjust the pressure. And there's also a lot of moisture in the textile and I want this to come off before I start printing. So I quickly give it a pre-press and I can see that I can barely close my press. So I will adjust the pressure by lifting up the upper plate, screwing it up until I can easily close my heat press. And now I'm giving the hoodie a quick pre-press. Nice addition, I get it all flat and ironed out so that I can place my design. After a quick pre-pressing of like 10 seconds, I can open up the press again. And now I can make choices for where to place my design. I also use a sticky lid roller to make sure that my working area is clean because any thing that would be left on the hoodie will be permanently transferred after the transfer process. Okay. Now I take the design 
And as always, it's nice to work with the A-foil because I can really align my design, can really make the right choices. I'm placing it pretty much on the middle here and covering it up with a sheet of matte finish paper to protect my heat press. For the transfer on this hoodie, I will press for 30 seconds because this is a pure cotton hoodie. I can make some choices on where to place those little guys. It says, take me somewhere, anywhere. And I think this could look really cool if I place it on the sleeves right over uh, your hand so that you have it right here and there on this hoodie. Could look really cool. And I will show you how you can do that after the pressing of this design. Time's already up, so I can open up my heat press, remove the matte finish paper and take the design from the press. Before I can peel this off, the design has to completely cool down. Let's see if I'm able to make the transfers on the sleeves in one step while the other part of the hoodie is cooling down. So I'm just placing the sleeves on the heat press, one here and the other one there. This hoodie is kind of cool because it's got these holes here where you can put your thumb through. So you will get an idea where you can put it because once the thumb is here, the sleeve will be up here. It might be different with other hoodies, but you have to figure out the right position. So what I'm going to do is, so that's the, the left arm and that's the right arm probably then. Yeah, this should be the upper side. All right, then I take my two little designs here and just place them somewhere like there. And here. Looks good. Now I can close the tray, make sure that my arms stay on the tray, and then I cover everything up with some matte finish paper. In this case, it's really important to have enough pressure to get those small little designs melt into the fabric as best as possible. But I've got a lot of pressure on this heat press here, so I'll give it a press for 30 seconds. Once the time is up, I open up my heat press again on this one and carefully take out the sleeves. Now one thing is super important as you've probably um, already know from other videos that the design has to be completely cold before we remove the A-foil from the textile. While the A-foil is still warm or hot, the glue of course is still warm as well. And if I would start removing the design now, I would literally tear off the design and have no accurate transfer. So what we recommend is that you let your designs completely cool down, either by putting the um, item to the side, doing some other work in the meantime, waiting until it's cooled down, or by speeding up the cooling. There are several tricks that you can use. You can either use some cold surface, like if you've got a stone surface, or if you live in a cold environment, you can just hang it outside quickly. Or you can use some paper, just sheets of paper or stacks of old magazines and rub them over the design to suck out the heat. That works really well as well. Or you just be patient a little bit and wait until the design is cool. Once the design is completely cold, we start peeling um, our foils. So I'll just start quickly over here and I will fold over the edge as usual and I will just quickly roll over my design. You gotta be really careful, particularly in those small areas, by rolling really carefully over your design. The best way is to find an angle where you can actually roll with the design so that it comes off quite nicely. As you can see, this one has taken on really nicely and even the small patches came over really well. So now we go over to the big one, do it the same way over here. Just quickly start rolling over the edges of your design. The bigger the design, the easier the process is. So you gotta be really careful, particularly in those smaller areas. One more thing is that this, 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 this kind of fabric is a bit stretchy. So you can see it because it's got some, some polyester probably or just the cotton fabric is kind of stretchy. And this makes it 
a little bit harder. So I just, you know, recommend that you kind of stretch it a little bit with one hand while you peel with the other. I'll show this to you on one of those other patches here on the side. You just literally just use your fingers to stretch it a little bit, then you fold over and then you start rolling. You can see that then it comes off really well. Okay, once you got that, we have to take the t-shirt back to the press. As you can see, the design is still shiny. We've got that in previous videos as well. And we want to give it a finished press on the same settings as we've pressed all the other steps in this video with the matte finish paper. This is going to ensure two things. First, the washability of your garment, and it's going to make sure that you get a nice matte finish. This step is recommended to be used like 15 to 20 seconds, especially on a thick hoodie like this one. You would be using 20 seconds to really melt the design into the fabric. Then you can slide out and remove the matte finish paper. And we're going to repeat that step quickly for the two prints on our arm sleeves. Once the time is up here, you can open the press, carefully remove the matte finish paper. And now we've got that adventure hoodie ready. Now you can see really a nice design centered on the chest piece. Really one of the features that we love about the A-foil is that you can align the design really well. And also here we've got it right on top of our sleeve once the thumb is fitted into the, the hoodie, so really great piece for nice um, spring evenings where it still gets a little cold, cooler. If you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. Make sure to follow us here on or on one of our other social media channels. And for today, I say thanks for watching and see you next time.